FOMO. My name's Patrick McGinnis, and I'll admit it, I have FOMO. And since you're here, I'm going to bet that you do too. But that doesn't have to be a bad thing. If you learn to channel your FOMO productively, you can make the most of every opportunity while keeping your sanity in the process. This is FOMO Sapiens After Hours, the snackable show about how you can make FOMO a force for good. FOMO. FOMO. Hey, FOMO Sapiens, welcome back to another episode of After Hours. Now, on last week's episode of FOMO Sapiens, we talked to Dave Crenshaw about multitasking. And as you recall, he's not a fan. And I actually learned a lot from him and somebody who I used to think I was the greatest multitasker in the world. And as we talked about in the episode, people who think they're really good at something usually are really terrible at it. And so I'm comfortable accepting the fact that I was not very good at it. And in fact, it's something that I needed to stop doing or do more thoughtfully. And so I wanted to talk today a little bit about time management because it's something I've written about in the past and it's always a timely topic. It's something that we all can work at and get better at. So I just wanted to give three different tips to you that you can use as you think about time management. Now, one of the reasons why I think time management is so critical is because everybody always tells me, oh, I'm so busy, I have no time for whatever thing that I think that they should do. For example, entrepreneurship, you know, obviously 10% entrepreneurship. I'm asking people to set aside 10% of their time to do something. And I always hear, oh, geez, I, just, I just can't do that. So it sounds like a great idea, Patrick, but I'm just too busy. And the reality is that we are all too busy because we all have smartphones in our hands. And I think the day that I got my first iPhone, was the day that basically I started to feel busy all the time. Because no matter when you have free time, you have the option of calling somebody or texting somebody or listening to a podcast, which is a very good use of your time, obviously. But you never have that sort of free time to just sort of be bored, right? Like when's the last time you were bored? And obviously pandemic had us all on our phones way more than we were maybe the year before, the year before that. So this is, a, this is a problem that many of us live with. If you look at the stats and how you're using your phone, the numbers are clear. You're spending a lot of time doing things. And so we all feel busy. And, and the reality is it's just poor time management. So here are my three tips to make your time management better. Number one is make time count for more. Now that's a kind of a big topic because there's a bunch of ways to think about that. But really what I'm getting at here is that we do spend a lot of our time doing things that don't really matter. And that can be waiting for somebody to get back to you on something. So you're, you're, you're at the office, you send that email, you finish that project, and then you're sort of waiting around. You could go online and start reading the news, but you could also do other things that are far more valuable. Another thing you can do to make time count for more is, like we talked about with Dave, combining something that's active with something that's passive. So listening to FOMO sapiens while you do the laundry is a great way to combine the active and the passive. So just making sure that you don't waste time on things that don't matter and that you're able to reallocate that time towards things that you want to achieve at the same time. It's a way of multitasking, what I call conscious multitasking, but it's a positive way of doing multitasking. Number two is cutting down on distractions. I mentioned that we're always on our phone, absolutely. And so thinking about and quantifying how much time you are spending on your phone, how much time you're spending on the internet, how much time you're spending watching television, all of those things and actually writing them down. As you know, I believe, I'm a firm believer, when you write something down, it just becomes real. It's much more tangible and you can then analyze it. Go through your day and think about how you spend your time. Now you can check out on your phone. Your phone will give you a lot of information because it's tracking you all day. And then you can keep notes of the other things you're doing. And when you do that, you're going to start to see how you're actually spending your time. So if you are really busy and you have things to do, but somehow you manage to binge watch 12 episodes of a TV show over your weekend, you're not busy, right? You're just choosing to spend your time on something else. And that can be fine. Maybe that's the way you want to spend your time. But if you haven't thought about that, you may want to reallocate that time to things that are higher value to you. The same thing with social media, the same thing with devices. So starting to think about how you're using technology and also how you're dedicating your time to technology is really critical because as we know, the attention economy makes money by dominating our attention and then monetizing it. So these products are created to suck you in. And so another important thing to think about doing as you manage how your time is spent with technology and your devices is to take off all the notifications 
And I'll tell you, just try it for a couple of days because here's what happens when you do. You start to realize that there is nothing that critical actually happening and that you can take an hour or two away and then come back and do everything at once and batch things, right? Which is so critical. And we've talked about in the past on shows with people like Nereal. So if you want to learn more about that, you can go back into the back catalog of FOMO Sapiens and find my interview with Nir Eyal all about Indistractable. I've been using his strategy ever since I met him and, and had him on the show and it's made a big difference for me. So cutting down on all those notifications, distractions allows you to focus better and use your time better. And the third thing, the third piece of advice I have for you, which is really my favorite, is when you are trying to do things and add things to the plate, try to add things that are complementary to the other things you're doing in your life. So what does that mean? Well, let's imagine that you want to start a new business. Starting a business that has some relationship with how you like to spend your time or things that you have expertise in or people that you know means you're gonna be way more efficient than, for example, trying to do something you have never done before. So I think about myself. If I start, for example, a new podcast tomorrow and I make it about politics, that's gonna be a great place for me to start because I love politics. Many of you who know me know that I could talk about politics all day long and you probably get sick of it, but I could talk about it. And so if I were to start a podcast, that would be one that I could do without a lot of friction. Now, if I started a podcast all about cooking, for example, I've been trying to learn how to cook and I've improved a lot, but I wouldn't have a lot to say on the topic. It would require tons of research. It would require tons of work and I would just be worse at it than I would be at other things. And so thinking about when you're adding things to your schedule or when you're organizing your schedule, finding ways that are frictionless with the other things you're doing is so important. So another thing you can do, for example, is when you are trying to work on something or you need help with something, you can combine that with spending time with people that you care about, right? So for example, I oftentimes engage my friends in, in, in making decisions for me. I think anybody who's read my books knows that I outsource a lot of my decision making. And so it's a great way to have a conversation with a friend, engage with them, and also get them to help you out with something, which is always really helpful. And so if you do these three things, that's the conscious multitasking, that is cutting out distractions, and that is trying to find things that are complementary to your life, I can promise you this, you'll still be busy. We're all busy, of course, but you will feel much more in the flow. You will feel less distracted. It'll be a lot more fun to do the things you wanna do and you will get more done. So think about that. I imagine some of you listening have your own ideas, your own strategies that you could share with me. So write in, you can get me at let's connect at patrickmcginnis.com. Find me on Twitter at PJ McGinnis and find me on Instagram at Patrick J. McGinnis. And if you like After Hours and FOMO Sapiens, make sure to check out all of our back catalog. And while you're there, please consider subscribing and rating the show. So that's it for today. I'll be back on Thursday with a new episode of FOMO Sapiens. I promise you it's gonna be a good one. Until then, take care of yourselves, FOMO Sapiens. FOMO. Want more of FOMO Sapiens and After Hours? Head over to FOMOSapiens.com where you can listen to past episodes, learn more about the show, and find out how to advertise. You can also connect with me on Instagram at Patrick J. McGinnis and on Twitter at PJ McGinnis.